Good afternoon. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. I'm Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Our guest today is a slot player from Down Under who goes by the handle of Slot King. Slot King, welcome to Gambling with an Edge. Uh, thank you, Bob and Richard. I'm honored to be on your show. I'm a great fan of you both and over 10 years of your program, so I can honestly say I cannot remember one time you haven't uh, you haven't talked since. Well, thank you. You're both very, very <laughs> rational people, very rational people. This sounds like a man who wants to be invited back again. <laughs> so what is it that you do? I'm actually a professional slot player. So uh, uh, would you like to know how that all happened? Please. Okay. So take the clock back to 1994. And in my home state, we had no casinos. Uh, the only gambling we had was on horse racing. So I'm a mild mannered high school teacher, family man, living in a country town just outside of a major city, Melbourne. Uh, my job was uh, the teaching after school, taking the kids out to their sporting facilities and so forth. An exciting life, predict and about as predictable as it can get. Anyway, that year, my state decided to open their first casino because in our state, we didn't have any casinos. In the, in the next state, they did. So, of course, all the people from my state were going across the border to the, the state next door and uh, spending their hard-earned money over there. It's a bit like your Texans heading over to Oklahoma. Now, for me, I was not interested. The casino opened, lots of fanfare, uh, obviously, obviously controversial, and uh, but I wasn't interested, so I had no intention to go and visit. I'm not a gambler. In fact, I don't believe a a gambler can become a professional um, a gambler. But now, in my 27 years' experience, I've no uh, no recollection of any regular slot player turning into a professional. Now, you guys uh, may have some different experiences there. If you've seen your regular video poker players or blackjack players turning into professionals. Um, I remember when I interviewed Billy Walters, um, he was basically a degenerate gambler, and I found it astounding that he was able to switch from, you know, basically big time losing gambler to professional. Uh, but I agree, it's very rare that someone who um, is, you know, is not a professional. Uh, is able to make that transition and I've had people say to me things like well if I learned to count cards it would take all the fun out of the game you know things like that so so yeah I I agree it's definitely rare that uh, that happens uh, it, actually happen, it happens quite a bit in video poker where people have were playing just by seat of the pants and learn about my writing or some of the others and learn how to do it. And so they used to be a losing player, and now they're at least a break-even player. And so yeah, I, I, can, I can see that. Um, you, need some, you need a fair bit of intelligence to play video poker. Um, I used to play it in uh, – I used to play video poker when the, the progressive jackpots got high enough that my uh, – my loss rate was, uh, I mean, you would be horrified with my loss rate, but we had enough, we had enough up our sleeve to, uh, to cover that. And then ultimately in my state, the, uh, the video poker died out and they did have video poker across the other side of the country in Perth. So um, I had people checking out the jackpots over there and, and sometimes I'd go over and play, but we had to keep a record of our uh, results and mine were very embarrassing. You so know, I can the, understand um, The other thing that we see a lot, both in um, table games and in slots, is uh, degenerate players or, or losing slot players sometimes identify a certain machine and 
recognize that it gets into a positive state, and yeah. so they will play it when that happens. But if they ha- if they don't have the option to play in a positive state, they'll play other machines in you know that are just negative machines. Yeah, waiting for it. Uh, yeah, they can't wait. Yeah, so uh, so they they don't really make the transition into into professional. They just recognize some winning situations. Yeah, yeah, they wipe out their advantages. So uh, if you want to be a professional, you have to be uh, very disciplined about when you play and when you don't play. So you can't uh, you, uh, you can't you can't uh, yeah decide to fill in the time while you're waiting doing something like that. Um, anyway, look, so here we are back in 1994, and after after the casino had been open for three months, I thought, look, I'll have a I was in, in the city. I thought I'll have a look. So I went into the casino and saw these table games, and uh, they had a game called Two Up, which is uh, a local game, but lots of slot machines. And some of those slot machines were gathered together in banks of machines. And I noticed over the banks of machines, quite a number of them had progressive jackpots. So there might be a bank of, say, 10 machines, and as people were playing them, the jackpot would rise. Now, I asked myself the question, could those progressive jackpots actually rise to a point where it's, it's worth sitting down and playing the, playing the machines? Now, I, I guess at that time I was probably the only person who had asked the question or attempted to find out. Now, back then I had no idea, no idea what the percentage returns were on slots or blackjack or uh, roulette, baccarat, whatever. So one of, the, one of the pieces of information that I needed was I needed to know what the loss rate was on the slot machines. So, okay, I'll see if I can find out what, uh, when, these, uh, when these machines are hittable. So this was not easy. What I did do was I mapped the reel, and that wasn't easy either, but I did map the reel of uh, one bank of machines. And uh, then I t- took the information to my maths department because that mathematics was beyond me. So we had some pretty smart people in our maths department at the high school. And uh, I got them working out um, what the odds were of getting the various prizes. And they were coming back with figures like the percentage return on the slot machines were 108%. I thought, that's generous. <laughs> anyway, so um, what I, now what I didn't realise at that time was that by 1994, they had invented what's called virtual reels. So even though I had mapped the reels accurately, some parts of the reels were designed to come up twice as often as other parts of the reels, that is, the non-paying parts of the reels. So, in fact, the, um, the returns were somewhat less than 108%. So after two months, I'd eventually got to know some of the staff. So I got to know the slot manager. So I said, oh, Peter, I said, um, I asked the question. I said, what, what uh, percentage returns do you get on your slot machines? What, what are the loss rates? He said, the loss rates are around 10%. Well, I thought, thank you very much. Uh, there goes two, two months of, uh, of work. So that gave me the, the first part of what, the information that I needed. Then the next month, I worked out the the rest of the formula, and it was time to put it to the test. So I had the theory, and let's see if it works. So I started on uh, $300 jackpots. They had a number of those there. And after after playing about 10 of those $300 jackpots, I built up a bankroll of about $1,500. It was working, and I can tell you that was a very, very exciting feeling. To know right. that well, the theory was minute. working. Yeah, no, I get that, but I ha- you just kind of skipped over. I figured out the rest of the formula, right? So mm-hmm. one of the things that's really important, because each stop on the reel it does not have the same chance of hitting, 
Yep. How did you calculate the chance of hitting the jackpot? There, usually there's one symbol on each reel. Yep. Let's say there's sevens and you need seven, seven, seven. How did yep. you calculate the chance of that hitting? Well, the the first uh, the three hundred dollar jackpots that I was playing were were must hits. Oh, must hits. Oh, okay, then, that's a yeah. different thing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Then from and from there, I went on to the uh, the straight progressives. Okay. The the straight progressives were a variety of uh, yeah your normal uh, slot machines, spinning reel slot machines, and also kino kino on the machines. Mm-hmm. We even had blackjack on the machines with the progressive jackpots as well. So I started with the three hundred dollar jackpots, built up a bankroll of about fifteen hundred. Started on the uh, st- straight progressives, uh, uh, about two thousand dollar jackpots, and built up the bankroll to about twelve hundred. Then a luxury car, which was attached to as a prize to the slot machines, was coming up worth about $60,000. So I sunk my $12,000 into that, and uh, possibly with a little bit of luck, but uh, I had about a 50% chance of getting it, and I got it. So the bankroll was starting to climb up. Within 18 months, I had won 12 luxury cars, uh, lots of cash jackpots, and a $300,000 jackpot over the other side of the country in Perth. I was starting to uh, spread out a bit, and uh, said, oh, well, if this works here, it's got to work elsewhere. So uh, that's how I started. That's how the bankroll started to rise. And um, the bankroll, I was making a, a lot of money back then, um, probably about uh, three to $400,000 a year in, in US, US dollars uh, because I didn't have competition. So, so nowadays, with nowadays there is competition, but yep. there are many more types of machines and many more places to play. So, yep. is it better for you now than it was then, or worse, or no, about the same? No, you're spot on. Uh, there are there is more uh, more venues, more machines, but there's also a hardcore in in my city there's a hardcore of um, other people who also now know how to do this so they virtually divide the city up into 13 and um, we uh, we have our own little areas that we we play in so you're quite right there Um, so things were going well for about the first three to four years now I think my guess my guess Bob and Richard is that you've had moments that your earlier moments in blackjack and video poker uh, were more profitable than later? Would that be right? It, it is for me. I don't know what – it's not so much earlier, but there was a point in the um, mid to late 90s, which were the golden days of video poker, which no longer exists. Mm-hmm. So um, there were uh, periods where things were better in some ways, but because there are so many more casinos, so many more places to play, um, you know, it's it's probably possible to make more money today than than back then when it was easier. I was quite surprised. I, I had the idea that blackjack was the opportunities of blackjack were possibly dying out. But I had a conversation with um, a gentleman on the east coast of the States, and uh, he said his average return was about $400 an hour, which I thought was very impressive. Yeah, there there has been a big uh, kind of rebirth of uh, card counting, and there are a lot of um, players out there that are, you know, making six figures a year, but – it's it's you don't get to stay in one place yeah, very much. You're constantly on the road, moving from casino yeah, to true. casino. Um, yeah, there there's certainly there's certainly advantages and disadvantages if I'm comparing blackjack with slot play. Uh, it's, you can't say one is better than the other. Uh, for example, uh, which one would be easier to learn? 
In fact, I'd say blackjack would be easier to learn than slot play. And the reason is, yeah, really? the reason is in blackjack you have over a hundred books teaching you how to teaching you ah. how to do it, and you've got forums and blogs. Now with slots, there's basically no book that will teach you how to work out when to sit on a progressive jackpot and play it. Now even my book, Million Dollar Slots, it's not a how to do it, but a how I did it book. So. So I'd say to, to start off with, you're, you're more likely to get the information you want through blackjack than you are for slots. But once you do have the skills, once you do know when to sit down on a progressive jackpot and play, I can tell you slots is a lot easier. If you're able to press, if you're able to press <laughs> a button and press it quickly, <laughs> then that's all you need to know. But I can tell you also it's, it's a very, as you've said many a time, uh, Richard, it's a painfully boring experience. Yeah, in that way, it's it, it, it's harder. For okay, sure. now this is probably the second difference is uh, bankroll. Now your bankroll requirements for playing slots is less than for uh, blackjack because the returns are higher, so you have fewer losing sessions. Now, until the pandemic, I had really had a losing month. Um, if you're playing a jackpot a day, then uh, it's very, very difficult to have a losing month. Um, so I'd be interested to know, Bob and Richard, what about yourselves? Uh, what would be, in terms of months, what would be your longest losing streak? My losing streak was when I very first started playing, and the only thing I did was count cards, and I lost for a hundred and sixty some hours. Well, that's not much. Um, well, <laughs> uh, for me, it was enough to oh, get okay. me to quit. <laughs> um, fortunately, I went back to it, um, and and even more fortunately, I learned to play things with yeah. a bigger edge. But um, okay. Um, now, the third difference is accessibility. Now, the big difference between playing slots and blackjack is that basically slot play is allowed and card counting is not allowed. Um, the progressive jackpots that you're playing for on the slot machines, on the banks of slot machines, belong to the players. Whereas if you're card counting, you are taking money from the casino now no yeah but because at least here in at least here in the united states um they do not like professional slot players and they have been barring them since the 90s uh, um maybe since yeah the you 80s. have mentioned that on a few occasions um i think that probably would be less the case when you get away from the strip out into the uh, some of the quieter states uh, but certainly, uh, yeah. Um, the other thing they really did not like was back back then when it was mostly progressives, banks yeah. of progressives. Um, you know, people formed yeah. teams and they would try to take up every yeah. seat on the bank, and the casinos really did yeah. not like that. Now, um, if you want, if you're going to play the slots, you need to be polite to the staff, considerate of the other players, uh, don't upset the big betters. Be discreet. Uh, try and blend in. So it is important to, uh, if you want to stay in a casino, as you say, you don't march in with a whole team. <laughs> Take every machine and uh, uh, yeah, and look like it. Look like an army. And we certainly had people like that over here. So uh, and we did get complaints. So anyway, that would be my advice. Um, so normally with slot play, uh, you can locate or the, the, the casinos that you can play in can be your local casinos. Whereas with blackjack, um, you can play your local casinos, but probably not for very long. So you need to, uh, you know, once you've been uh, shown the door there, you'll need to find a whole lot of new, new casinos to play in. 
I would imagine, uh, Richard, that you would have located in quite a few states around um, around around the states, quite a, a quite a number of states that you played in. Oh yeah, and and quite a few countries okay, as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, in in the states, how many states do you think you would have played in? Oh wow, um, I don't. I, just off the mm. top of my head, I'd have to guess. I'd guess okay, twenty sure. or yeah. so. But um, I I don't know. I should stop and count them up sometime to maybe more. Um, yeah, it's a certainly a good way to get to get to see the country, isn't it? <laughs> Although. <laughs> yeah, but there are a lot of parts of the country I'm not so sure I like seeing, especially in the uh, winter. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I guess the other thing you notice, it doesn't matter how good how good a casino looks from the outside. If you go to Macau and they got some, you know, casinos that look fantastic, but once you get inside, they're all the same. And uh, some of those mega casinos, the only difference is they've got five times as many tables and five times as many slot machines. So there's not a lot that's um, uh, that's super interesting inside these places. Um, so a blackjack player's got a limited life. Um, uh, so you, yeah, you know, you you mentioned that there are no books, but um, a lot of people seem to be uh, learning how to play slots on oh, okay. Twitter. There seems to be a very active uh, slot community mm. on Twitter. Are, are you on no, there? I, have you looked no, at I that haven't. at all? No, I guess those things should be should be uh, closed down, shouldn't they? If they can close, if they can close. <laughs> well, certainly a lot of players are not happy with how much it gets talked well, about. But otherwise. I think you're yeah. talking about a different game, Richard. Um, what's on? What Slot King is talking about are progressives and. and and must hit, and by. Must hit by. And what's on yeah. Twitter are usually other types of slots where um, you're looking for so many symbols in the third column and it's going to be in an advantageous state for a few rolls. That's not at all what Slot King is talking about. No, I don't, I don't play those. Um, you've got to be present in the casino waiting for these things and uh, – there's also quite a bit of competition. So the the hourly return on those types of plays um, are not as good as on the progressive progressive jackpots. I'll leave those I'll leave those jackpots. To, oh, sorry, I'll leave those plays to the, the the ploppies. Well, you know the other thing that's good about playing the games that you're talking about is I think the competition is yep. less just because many of those people who run around checking machine after machine for those kinds of things don't Absolutely. have the bankroll Absolutely. to play a larger yep. must hit by. Yep. The uh, bigger the jackpot, you're gone. So I, I have a question about a, about yep. must hit buys. Um, it There are some must hit buys where – the chance of hitting the must hit by is not equal on every spin. And some of them, the chance of hitting the must hit by does not become very likely until way, way, way late in the oh, cycle. Okay. Yep. So how do you, how do you get that information? How do you calculate those types of must yeah, I've, I've seen that situation in uh, in Canada. Uh, very tricky. Um, uh, we well, with with my student, we did look at that. I can't recall exactly how we we figured out when to play it, but um, certainly uh, you really have, you've got to look at it and just you know. There's no, there's no sort of formula you can you can pull out and say right use this formula. You've got to think about it very hard and and uh, try and work it out. But I couldn't say say now what we did for the, those. But I, yes, there, there have been some tricky ones. Huh. But you don't you don't often see that. Not very often at all. 
they're more prevalent, I guess, yeah, in the could, States. It could well be, but um, I haven't seen those elsewhere. Okay, so um, now playability. Now, the good thing about lack, uh, card counting is that you can go into a casino and find your favourite tables. You can sit down and you can start playing. Now, slot play is a waiting game. So, firstly, there's only some slot progressives that are realistically playable. And basically, as you've said before, Richard, um, every progressive jackpot is playable. But some might take 100 years to, <laughs> to get to the, the playable state. So, uh, realistically, there's only some, some progressives that are playable. And of those... 90% plus or minus uh, 90% will go off before they reach that critical point where the advantage turns to you so as a slot player you'd need to monitor a number of casinos to give yourself uh, a reasonable income so if you're monitoring four or five or six casinos uh, you, you could get to play one a day if you expect to expect to to make a, a living out of one casino, um, I don't think uh, it'll be worth your while. The, you're gone. So when when you say when when you say progressives, are you including must hit yeah. buys in yes. with progressives? Yes. Okay. So, but what percentage of your play is an actual progressive that is not a must hit buy? Uh, it was quite a deal, it was a lot higher um, in the earlier days. I made most of my money in the, the non must hits, but now it would be mainly must hits. Mm. Now, comparing card counting and slot play, uh, slot play yeah. skills. Uh, for a card counter, you can add that to your your bow. So if you go into a casino to to play uh, to play blackjack, you can always look around and if there's something coming up in the slots, you can also play those. But it doesn't work the other way around. Uh, a slot player can't count the cards because a slot player is playing in his own area. If he starts counting the cards, he'll, he'll get excluded. And if he gets excluded, he can't play the slots, so it doesn't work the other way. Yeah, a lot of blackjack players have, have added slot play to their yeah. repertoire. Okay, now the next uh, difference is confidentiality. Now, with card counting, it's good to talk to other players. You share the notes on playing conditions in various casinos. Now, if you learn or when you learn how to, to beat the slots, your first impulse is excitement. You want to tell everybody, I've beaten the slots. My answer is don't. Because the more other people who know how to play the slots intelligently will directly affect your earnings. Now, as an example, um, some years ago, my Canadian student, um, I taught him, uh, and in the first year, he made over $160,000, Canadian dollars, in his, in his first year. Now, as much as I implored him, implored him to keep it all to himself, uh, I suspect that with some of the larger jackpots he shared with some others, uh, shared some vital information, and in the second year, his income had dropped down to just over $30,000. So when I teach my students, I get them to sign a confidentiality agreement before they start, and that's money for their benefits. Uh, it's also for mine, but money for their benefit. Okay. Um, so that was the – that's basically how I uh, built up the bankroll. But 
I don't know how how you guys went when you started making some serious money, but um, uh, building up a bankroll can have some problems for uh, for the gamblers. So if, if, if some of your people out there find they do find something very good and uh, come into a fair bit of money fairly quickly, I may have some uh, some good advice for them. What do you mean? What kind? What 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 kind of problems are you talking about that happen when you? I mean, other than paying taxes. Okay. Well, the first one um, in the first the first three or four years, um, I was making three to four hundred thousand US a year. Now, I guess like like you people, like uh, like others, I didn't know how long this was going to last. Now, it, it could last one year, uh, but I had to. Go on the basis that each year was going to be the last year of income. So, as a family man, I thought, okay, well, uh, this money is going into the future fund. I mean, we, we we may need this later on in life. So, I was stocking this away in the future. Now, my wife at the time, every jackpot that I I won, she would translate that in her mind to uh, furniture. The carpet, uh, renovations, and so forth. So she had a very different idea of where that money should be invested. Now, possession is 90% of the law, so I had the cash and I was dictating where it was going. Now, there was an occasion when I, I flew over to, to Vegas to check out Vegas, and uh, while I was over there, the, the wife received some legal advice. So when I returned from my Vegas trip, uh, my wife alerted me to a, an envelope on the bedside table and said, you better read that. When I read the this paper, it said uh, it was uh, for the, from the, uh, the lawyer. Sadly, the marriage has irric, irric, uh, sorry, irric, irreconcilably broken down because of your failure to renovate the bathroom. Now, I reckon I must be the only person in the world who's uh, stated reason for a divorce was re- failure to renovate the bathroom. But, uh, <laughs> but certainly that, that, was the, uh, that was on the form. So ultimately, she got the house and I kept the bankroll. So that was the first problem. Uh, but the bankroll uh, was, was quite significant. Now, the second problem was a gain of my own making. I had a, one of the big punters in Hong Kong was a, a good friend of mine. And he alerted me to a fund manager over there who was getting very good returns. His name was Michael Bastian. I don't know if you've heard of him. Michael Bastian. Uh, no. Like myself, a former teacher. And he had... Uh, started up uh, a, fund, a fund management company called Gideon Investments, and he had attracted funds from sporting and racing identities. Now, I met Michael. Um, he seemed okay, flamboyant, expensive apartments, uh, very generous. Um, so I had a look at his reports and what he used to do, he would he would invest his money in stocks, and on his quarterly reports, he put down the price he paid for these stocks, and the price they are today, and he give himself like a teacher, give himself marks like uh, between say C minus to A plus. So uh, you know I could relate to that because I used to have to write out reports for my students. I used to give them all C and write the unsatisfactory. But he was a bit more uh, detailed in his reporting than I used to be. Uh, so he guaranteed the losses for your first year, which was very generous. He would take um, 10% of the profits in the first year and 20% of the profits in the second year. When I looked at his returns, uh, 1996 was 38% return. 1997 was 39% return. 1998, 51% return. 1999, 42% return. So here I am making very good money, and I can see 
that I could double my money every two years by investing with Michael. So I could not get my money to him fast enough over in Hong Kong. In fact, I even went to the bank to see if I could borrow some money to increase my returns. Now, have you ever gone to the bank as a professional gambler with no taxable income and tried to borrow money? Yeah, that yeah, it's first. Although gambling is taxable income yeah, here yeah, in the United yeah. States, but yeah, though we don't. So f- good, fortunately for you, they wouldn't loan they it to you. They didn't loan it to me. They said I can um, borrow twenty thousand dollars on my credit card, but certainly nothing of. Uh, I couldn't loan anything out of, um, of a, a reasonable sort of interest. So I was stuck with what what I was making. I was sending over to uh, to Michael. I had met him on a couple of occasions, and one particular occasion I met up with him was October 1999. Now, I met him in Hong Kong, now, the very flamboyant guy. Um, so we hop in a taxi, and he said, oh, we'll go to a nightclub. I said, fine. So we drive over to um, a place that just had a door. It was just this door on the side of the road. I thought, mm, doesn't look too good. Anyway, we walk down the stairs, and there's a huge entertainment complex downstairs. So we hop into this golf cart, and we tootle along in the golf cart, underneath the streets of Hong Kong, mind you, and we come to a theatre. So we go into the theatre, all these seats and so forth, and no other clients there. We sit down, and the next thing, there's a a dozen Russian dancing girls. So... uh, we're watching these girls dancing. They're not all that good, but uh, I thought, well, you know, well, I'm, I'm the guest here. I really can't complain too much. And Michael said, oh, do you like any of those girls? And I said, oh, I shrugged my shoulders. I said, oh, that, the blonde over there is quite nice. And that brunette's not too bad. I said, okay, fine. And then he said, uh, do you like karaoke? Oh, yeah, we'll have a bit of a sing song. Why not? So back in the little car, uh, cart, when we tootle along to another room, and we come in, there's quite a large table there with benches either side. So he sits down, and I sit down beside him. He said, don't sit down beside me. He said, sit on the other side. Thought, That's a bit rude. Okay. So we sit down on the other side, and the next thing, this, uh, this bucket with champagne comes in with all the ice around it. I can imagine uh, it would not have been cheap. The cigars came out. And then, I know, then the two girls that I mentioned uh, were quite pretty. Next thing, they're sitting on my left-hand side, the two Russian girls. And not only that, but I had a Korean girl on my right-hand side. And I'm, uh, I'm, do, I'm doing some calculations. I think this is, uh, this is not going to be cheap. So I called the mama saying over, and I said, well, how much are these girls going to cost to, to sing with me? And the mama San said, uh, well, they're each, uh, they're all, each $600. I think the Korean was $500. So I don't know why, but uh, 600 and $600 and $500 just for singing. Um, I'm thinking, well, that's how much to exercise the vocal cords. Um, I've got no idea how much it would cost to exercise anything else apart from that. I, I'm sure if it was $600 for singing, it would be a lot more for, for something else. So... Uh, I said to Michael, look, mate, I, I feel a bit bad about this, about the expenses, so um, I uh, apologise and I left. But Bob and Richard, I should have stayed because that was where my money was being invested. All of his money was going into gambling. He was investing his money in gambling, prostitutes, alcohol, and drugs, and he probably blew the rest. Probably wasted now, the rest. He probably blew the rest, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw Michael again uh, uh, three months later. Oh, in February 2020. Sorry, 2000, in the year 2000, I saw him again. Now, at this stage, I had wind that things were not as they seemed to be. And I had dinner with Michael and my Hong Kong friend. And he did seem a lot more withdrawn than his usual self. So I asked for my money back 
and he said he would return the money in the following month. So I thought, right, okay. I wasn't counting the days. I was counting the hours and I was counting the minutes because I, he had all of my money. Then on the 16th of March, there was a, a newspaper article. Bastion fell to his death, apparently slipping off the edge of his six-story apartment. Uh, there was building speculation that a Chinese gang was in, involved. I just uh, going through some articles. I, re I found this one, and it said, "In those mad, panicked final days, Bastian was being pursued by one particular investor in Australia, demanding the return of his investment." Bastian knew if he defaulted, his other 270 odd investors would panic and ask for their money. So I might have had a, a, a I might have had some part of that. But I can tell you, I was absolutely devastated. Now, if you didn't have the money, if you didn't have the money, uh, it wouldn't matter so much. But when you've had the money and lost the money, it really, really, really does affect you. And I remember waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning thinking, I've just had the worst nightmare. <laughs> I just, I've just read that I've lost, I've just blown all of my money and, uh, and I did. So uh, I hope your listeners, uh, if they do, if they do get into some quick good money, uh, uh, a little bit wiser than than I was. Fortunately for me, uh, more casinos were opening up and uh, more opportunities, and I was able to uh, not only get my money back but uh, to recover my lifestyle. So the moral is: whenever you start thinking you're a little bit half smart. Look out. Now, what about you guys? Have you had any experience with uh, with some rather silly investments? Yeah, I've I've been ripped off. I've been scammed. I, yeah, I've been scammed bad. So, um, yeah, I think gamblers maybe are more susceptible because we're used to taking yep. risks. Um, and... Um, yeah, yeah. We need to take a break from some, from Absolutely. some commercials, Absolutely. though. Absolutely. Someone's got to pay for the dinner. The South Point has more than 10,000 gains, returning more than 99%. This is more than anyone else has. In April, the promotion is the $500,000 guaranteed Money Madness promotion. Two casino-wide promotions are running at all times. The large one begins at 10,000 and must be hit by 25,000. All active players playing when this hits receive $25 in free play added to their account. Immediately after hitting, it starts over again at 10,000. A smaller progressive in the range of 1,000 to 2,500 is also going at all time. It's expected the smaller one will be hit three times a day. All active players who've played at least $1 in the previous minute with their player's card inserted are eligible to win. South Point has room deals. Most dates, July through, excuse me, June through August. Weeknights from $69. Weekend nights from $119. Includes two cocktails at the pools, 20% 20 20 off spa packages. Book online before April 30th with the promo code EDEAL51. BlackJackApprenticeship.com is an excellent site for those of you who wish to be successful at counting cards at Blackjack. The primary value of the membership are the video course, training suite, members forum, pro betting software, casino database, result tracking software, members only podcast, and the members chat room. They will be having boot camps this summer. If you're interested, contact Colin Jones at Colin at blackjackapprenticeship.com. Videopoker.com is the best place to play lots of games. If you sign up for the gold membership, $8.95 a month or $79.95 a year, this allows you to get correction on most of the games. The game of the week is Wheel Poker Deluxe. This is a game where you pay an extra five coins per game, meaning triple play costs 20 coins, 
five play costs 30 coins, 10 play costs 55 coins, and the bonuses come on dealt trips, full houses, and quads. Slightly different for Deuces Wild variations. If you hit one of these bonuses, you spin the wheel. When the wheel stops, it lands on a drawing opportunity. Sometimes it is 100 play, 4 to a flush. Sometimes it is 10 play with a pair of aces. Sometimes it is triple play, 4 to the royal, etc. There is no skill involved in the hold for the bonus, and the bonus is earned on the draw, meaning that if you know the strategy of the base game, you know the strategy to the Wheel Poker Deluxe version, which adds a bit of EV with a bit of variance. Surprisingly, the triple play version always pays a bit more than the five play version. For example, in 9-6 double double bonus, the base game pays 98.98%. Five play version of Wheel Poker Deluxe pays 99.31%. And the triple play version pays 99.47%. We're back talking to Slot King. Okay, and you're going to, sorry. Go ahead. You were going to tell us or, or share with us some of your embarrassing experiences about uh, getting caught up in scams. Well, I have actually written about most of mine. Um, mm -hmm. I trusted some people I shouldn't have trusted. And, uh, and so my revenge, I suppose, was in a, uh, in a blog. And I list their name and picture, and um, and that has a way of getting some of the money back. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Years yeah. ago when the, and sometimes treated badly by casinos, uh, so when it was held by different ownership, I published a uh, Don't Trust the Tropicana, part one of two, and... Mm -hmm. And there was another version the next week and um, didn't get any money out of that, but it was uh, sweet revenge and they were sold a bit later. Okay. Okay, good. What about you, Richard? Well, as I mentioned, I had, I'd been ripped off and I, I was totally Ooh. scammed too. And, um, you know, it's it's bad to lose money. Um, it, I can kind of usually put that behind me. Yeah. But what's really bad is when you lose other people's money. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's, that's just worse. awful. Yeah. I, I mean, for me, that was worse. much worse than losing yeah, my own money. Um, but, I had uh, one. Go on. Yeah. No, I was just. It's it's uh, it's it's. it's it's just bad, <laughs> and it, but it happens to us yeah, all. Yeah, you feel I guess. stupid. I mean, uh, I think your listeners would be surprised if if either of you were, were scammed out of money because you you're both pretty smart. But um, I had another another scam was I was introduced to a so-called uh, sports betting guru. Um, this is a um, a guy by the name of Paul. I won't give his last name. I, I'm though I'm tempted to after listening to uh, Bob, but um, he had, uh, he claimed he was a bit fair genius and so forth. And anyway, so um, I tried him out. And what he would do is he, he'd give it a, uh, a spreadsheet of all the bets that he was making. So you could see in advance where he was putting the money. So it looked quite legitimate. And uh, then you could see it, you could follow the, the sports and uh, then work out, uh, you could, see the results and you could say right well that's where the money went but ultimately uh over a period of time i finished up losing sixteen thousand dollars and um when i totaled it all up i, I turned over four thousand four hundred thousand dollars my sixteen thousand dollar loss uh equated to a four percent of turnover so in fact what he was doing was he was not actually putting any money anywhere he was just claiming that he was uh, betting on these various sports and uh, and keeping the um, basically keeping the uh, commission. So that was rather embarrassing, and uh, that was a yeah. I mean, you look you look back and you say, why in the hell, you know, why in the hell didn't I do this? Didn't I do that? And you look at other people who get conned out, and you think, you fools. But 
then you you make the same mistake yourself. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that sort of covers what uh, I wanted. So to you talk have about a book. It. Tell oh, us yes, about. Yes, I do the have book. a book. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, uh, it's called Million Dollar Slots. Uh, that's available at Amazon and Kindle. Also, uh, your listeners are welcome to contact me with any questions I have about slots. Uh, my email is slots king. That's S L O T Z K I N G at gmail.com. So any questions you've got at all, uh, not a problem. I'll answer them all. My website. And we'll put those uh, links in the show notes. Okay, slotking.org. Now that's Wait, I'm sorry, slotking is what? Yes, yeah, slotking.org. Now that's slot with an O, not a U. Slotking, not, not, yeah. not the other. <laughs> right. But there's no oh, Z. Z in that one, no. The email is slotsking with a Z at, at gmail.com. So, uh, yeah, I'd love to talk to your listeners and uh, have a chat. And I'd love to find out what they're doing. Uh, always like to keep 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 up with conditions um, in other parts of the other parts of the world, other parts of the country. And uh, uh, it's always a two, it's always a two way uh, process. It's not just one way from me to them. It's from them to, them to me as well. You mentioned that you have students. Yes. Are you still uh, training uh, other I do. people? Um, I don't do it very often, to be, to be quite honest. But um, probably now that the pandemic's here and I can't, I can't really get out and, and do much. It's, it's a good time for me to uh, uh, to train up other people. And uh, because I can't actually get to be with my students, which I usually prefer. Uh, I'm offering a 40% discount on the uh, on the course, so we'll do it do the course by um, by uh, by Zoom. Very good. So at the end of our shows, we usually have a recommended section where the host and sometimes our guests recommend something that they have done recently. Richard, do you have something for us today? Yeah, I'm reading a book that I'm really liking. Um, I'm, I'm only, I'm, I'm a little more than halfway through it, but I'm really, really enjoying this book. It's called American Dirt, and it's by Janine Cummins, and it's a novel about a uh, woman in Mexico, and her eight-year-old son fleeing from the uh, cartels who murdered her husband. And um, as I say, uh, it, it's her trying to get you know to the States from Acapulco. And uh, as I say, it's really well written. I'm really enjoying it so far. For me, um, Bonnie and I are going through the television series called Episodes, which was originally produced, I think, starting in 10 years ago, and it went for five seasons. Um, It's about a writers of an English television show, which won a lot of awards and were hired to bring it over to the America and everything goes wrong. And Bonnie's problem with the show is um, they say fuck too much, but um, that's not an issue for me. And uh, it's uh, it's extremely enjoyable. It's yeah, I having worked in television, I loved that show. I thought it was hilarious, um, and it's. Uh, it's the guy from Friends. Uh, what's Matt uh, LeBlanc? Matt LeBlanc is in the show at playing himself, and um, he's just great in the show. So yeah, it, it was originally on Showtime that show, and um, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Very Should I good. Get mine? You certainly may. Okay, I'm excited. I'm excited. 
Uh, I don't think you guys have bought this up before, but um, uh, I bought – now, there's a, a virtual reality thing you stick on your head. It's called Oculus Quest 2. Is you, yes, my son okay, has Okay, fantastic. It, it costs about 400 US from Amazon. Um, you can uh, you can <laughs> you can go to any you can go to any basically any street in the world, and you have a 360 degree view, and you can move up the street because um, uh, Google Maps is basically it's based on Google Maps, but I never realised Google Maps actually take a 360 degree view. So you can actually be standing there, looking around, looking up, looking down and uh, walking around any street that you want to uh, go to. You can also, um, if you're looking at the current uh, location of a house, for example, you can go back 12 years or 13 years and see what it looked like 13 years ago because uh, Google Maps do this every year. Also, um, my daughter lives in Dubai, so we play, uh, we play mini golf together. <laughs> She, 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 wow. she puts it, and I putt it. We keep it, score, and there's, there's, um, I don't know. Look, there's half, there's a dozen courses, all beautifully laid out, and uh, it, it is really fantastic. Is is that Google Maps? Is that a free app, or is that a pay? Because a lot of the stuff on that's there, you true. Have that's true. Uh, that one's free from memory. It's called Wanda. W A N D E R. Uh, just fantastic. Huh. I, 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 wow, I, I did play, uh, just, I, just the beginnings of a couple of games and it was, it was yeah. amazing. I mean, it, it's very easy to fall over if oh, you're yeah, not, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. but you can go to some <laughs> of the, 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 the best tourist sites, sites in the world. For example, I haven't been to Petra in Jordan, but here I am walking down through the cabins with the, um, you know, these narrow sort of walkways and they have these wonderful, um, wonderful constructions either side and, and uh, just just absolutely fantastic. But I've got a feeling that when everybody's got one of this is one of these is going to put the tourist business out of business. I mean, wh- who is going to want to sit on huh. a, a, a plane for 24 hours to go and see something that you can that you can actually experience in your own lounge room? Yeah, you could also go check out casinos you haven't been to and figure out like where to park and uh, that's off site and yeah, I can see all kinds of. Uh, I'm definitely I'm going to check that oh, out. Fantastic, that sounds fantastic. great. Yeah, it's so interesting when when you get uh, somebody who hasn't used this before and you dial up their their home address and you just watch them and they as they as they're sort of moving around and looking, they're actually pointing out to me. They've got they got the uh, the goggles on, but they're pointing out you know, some shop that they actually shop at, and this, that's oh that's over there. Yeah, they're pointing as if I can see what they can see. So half excitement <laughs> seeing the excitement in other people's uh, faces when they use it. Yeah, very good, Slot King. It was thank you very much for joining us today. It was thank you very much for having me. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Go out and hit lots of royal flushes, everybody. Good day.